Hello, I'm Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about 11.15 a.m. Eastern on Friday, August 26th. The case for raising U.S. interest rates has strengthened in recent months because of improvements in the labor market and expectations for moderate economic growth, Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen said today. Yellen did not indicate when the U.S. Central Bank might raise rates, but her comments reinforced the view that such a move could come later this year. The Fed has policy meetings scheduled in September, November, and December. Speaking at a three-day international gathering of central ba bankers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Yellen said the U.S. economy was nearing the Federal Reserve's statutory goals of maximum employment and price stability. She went on to say, in light of the continued solid performance of the labor market and our outlook for economic activity and inflation, I believe the case for an increase in the federal funds rate has strengthened in recent months. Investors currently see an 18% probability that the Fed will raise rates at its September policy meeting and a 53% chance of an increase in December. And on that note, let's look at three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, we're going to look, as we usually do, at our daily chart of the S&P 500 Spider, symbol SPY. As you all know by now, this is the ETF that tracks our S&P 500 benchmark index. Well, when the uh, announcement was made by Fed Chair Yellen that it, it looked like the U.S. economy is strengthening, uh, certainly that's good news. Immediately, the S&P futures dove down because a stronger economy means, of course, the Fed is more likely to raise re interest rates. Then it moved back up because... Uh, I, I believe traders are thinking, well, they're not going to raise it in September. It may be put off to December. So with all that happening, uh, right about now, the SPY is kind of leveled off, and it is trading, as you see when I captured this chart, at $218.67, right still within the range we've been looking at for about the last three weeks. Of course, $218.67 on the SPY is about $21.86 on the S&P 500 itself. As we see now, the 20-day moving average, the red line on this screen, has caught up with price. So price is now sitting atop the short-term moving average. <clears throat> if we look down at the green line, we see the 50-day moving average and that is considered to be an intermediate term moving average trend-wise. And I put a little yellow caution line under that. As many times, if an index or a stock moves below the 50-day line, many institutional traders consider that to be a slight negative. But at the moment, the SPY is at least safely above it. And uh, that is coming in right at about $214.70. Uh, we do have price support here, price support uh, for the S&P in this very, very, very narrow range we see right at about 216 Again, more price support or moving average support coming in and price support at about 215 we have resistance up here at 219. So it just um, it it it'll be interesting to see in the coming week and moving through probably quiet next week, probably picking up after Labor Day. Hopefully, we get some more volume in this market. Uh, we'll have to see if if the SPY falls down out of this little tight range it's in between 216 and 219 if it moves back down and takes into some profit taking. If we look at the 14-day RSI right now, kind of interesting because we do see that giving up a little bit of its optimism. It was overbought for quite a while, but in the last week or so, the 14-day RSI relative strength indicator is get, or index has given up some of its optimism about price, even though price is basically moving sideways. 
The MACD line plotted overall volume spikes here. Same thing. Uh, price is going sideways. Very slight bearish divergence here in the MACD. Moving average convergence, divergence oscillator. With the black line, I don't know if you can see it, the black and MACD line trading slightly below its red signal line, although these both lines are still above the zero line, and that's a positive. So not going on much right here. Again, the indicators are losing their optimism to a very slight degree. So we just watch and wait as we have been for really going on now about two months. We need some good news coming in here. And of course, the strengthening economy is good news, but the specter of rising interest rates gives some traders pause. Now let's go on and look at our daily chart of PowerShares QQQ. This, of course, is the ETF that closely follows our, our um, NASDAQ 100 index. Now the NASDAQ 100, uh, of course, is made up of the non-financial stocks uh, in the NASDAQ composite, non the, the strongest stocks by market capitalization. Tech stocks have been very, very strong this year. And as we see here, the QQQ, all, uh, when I captured it today, was trading at $117.21. The all-time high is $120.50 back in March of 2000. So we're getting pretty close to that. As you can see, since the Brexit lows here, down at about 102, the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100, just ran up here as fast as it can go, moved past all resistance up at the 109 area, just kept on rising. It's been virtually unstoppable doing that on the, fa on the back of such stocks as Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apple, and um, uh, Google. So now what I'm looking at here, I'm watching the QQQ. I'm watching it again at $117.21, just to top its 20-day moving average. I'm looking down here at, uh, again, the price support here at 116, uh, price support at 116. The RSI here is, is also giving up some of its optimism, just like it did on the SPY. The MACD is giving up its optimism, just like it did on the SPY. With the MACD line now, you can probably see below its signal line. Now, this is only a slight negative, but it's here. It's something we want to put in our back pocket. The 50-day moving average is moving higher and coming in at about 113. What I'm doing here is I'm going to, as well as watching the cues, I'm going to keep an eye on the, the NASDAQ leaders like Amazon, like Microsoft, like Apple, uh, Facebook, Google. And if I see them start to roll over a little bit, perhaps succumb to some profit taking in the coming week if we don't have enough good news to keep it going, I'm going to watch those stocks because I think if tech stocks do come into some profit taking here, I believe that will pressure the entire market lower. If, on the other hand, uh, techs move up and out and over $118, then potentially we could have another leg up. Uh, I would be quite something to see, but but it would be there. So keep an eye on this and see if it can move higher or if it needs to come into some profit taking, at which case uh, we'll probably look for opportunities in uh, strong stocks. All right, finally, let's go on to an ETF we haven't looked at in a long time, the S&P Home Builders Spider, Home Builders Spider, symbol XHB. There are 35 components in the XHB. And uh, when we think of this, this is, this is home builders. The ITB, the iShares, actually has more actual home builders in it. The XHB, the spider, has companies in it like the top holdings are Temper Sealy, Masco, Pulte, which of course is a home builder, Fortune Brands, Owens Corning, so it also has uh, suppliers in it, more suppliers in it. I, I believe if the economy is strengthening, and it looks like it is, and interest rates stay low, and it looks like they will, that home builders may be able to stay pretty strong here. 
The XHB, when I copied the chart today or captured it, it was trading at $36.30. We note that it too came off its Brexit lows, hesitated at, at was resistance, is now support at the 250-day moving average, uh, gathered up a little more speed. I like to see that. And, and then is now moving sideways, trading in a range between about 35 50 and about 36.50. So it's trading in a consolidation here. If it can break out, the RSI is moving up ever so slightly. That's a positive. The MACD line has come together with the signal line positive over the zero line. If the economy can continue to move forward here, I think it's possible in upcoming weeks that the XHB can break out over 36.50. Uh, last year at this time it was in... Uh, in August of 2015, it was trading at 39.50. So I'm thinking here, if the S&P can rise higher, if the market can move up here, then I'm thinking the XHB over uh, over $36.50 may be something I look at as a positive uh, position in upcoming months. If it has to move back and forth here, if the market sees some profit taking, then for sure I'll keep an eye on it. I'll only want to be positive on it or get into it if it stays above its 50-day moving average, which is now coming in a little bit over $35. Of course, if I were to hold it or buy it and it fell below the 50-day moving average, that would be my exit. I wouldn't want it anymore, at least for now. So keeping an eye here on the XHB, seeing if it can rise up to prior resistance from 2015 and then move higher as we move into the fall or autumn of the year. Now we'll go on to next week's economic reports. But first, please check out our new online training program, Trade Like a Master, Supercharge Your Brain for Maximum Profits. Diane Alexander, who is a psychologist and neuroscientist, and I have developed this program to show you how to power up your brain and earn more money trading and investing. This is a revolutionary new concept that can help you make breakthroughs in your financial future. Trade Like a Master is being offered right now through this weekend for an extremely low price, but this price is going to be raised on Sunday night at midnight. So. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity. Check out the link on this screen for more information. And it is http colon forward slash forward slash Tony Turner Specials dot com forward slash trade like a master hyphenated hyphen four. Uh, or you can go to Tony Turner dot com and click on the pop up screen. This is really an incredible opportunity, so bring your brain and check it out while the price is still low. And now for the upcoming week's economic reports. On Monday, we have PCE prices. Tuesday, we have the Case-Shiller Real Estate Index and Consumer Confidence. Wednesday, we have the ADP Employment Numbers, Chicago PMI, Pending Home Sales, and Crude Inventories. A lot going on this week on the economic front. Thursday, we have jobless claims, the ISM index, auto and truck sales, natural gas inventories. And on Friday, we have the monthly jobs report, of course, with the unemployment rate. And we will be watching that closely. Again, please check out Trade Like a Master, Supercharge Your Brain for Maximum Profits. Again, this is a revolutionary new program designed to boost your market success. Don't miss out. It's on sale again only through this Sunday night. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.